Hello friends, welcome to my lecture on conformal mappings. Uh, a complex linear function is defined as a function of the form f z equal to a z plus b where a and b are complex constants. If you look at this uh, function f z equal to a z plus b, uh, then uh, it consists of two uh, uh, transformations. The two transformations are first transformation is the translation and the next transformation is the uh, resultant of magnification and rotation. So, let us first discuss uh, the uh, translation. Okay. You can see uh, this w f z equal to a z plus b is uh, actually a composition of two transformations. One is z w equal to z plus alpha, the other one is w equal to beta z. So, let us see uh, what uh, what is the geometrical significance of w equal to z plus alpha. Uh, in the complex z plane, let us say uh, p and a represent the complex numbers z and alpha, uh, where alpha is fixed, z is a variable point. Let us join them to the origin. Okay, and then we complete the parallelogram O P Q A. Okay, then uh, this vector P P Q. Okay, the vector P P Q represents the complex number alpha, and so Z becomes uh, this Q becomes Z plus alpha. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, that. Uh, uh, this transformation w equal to z plus alpha is actually a translation of the point p in the direction of the argument of alpha uh, through a distance mod of alpha. Okay. This is uh, uh, the angle that uh, the vector o a makes with the uh, x axis, this argument of alpha. Okay. So, uh, uh, this O A is parallel to P Q and therefore, we have to move the point P, uh, P uh, to get to the point Q if we move P in the direction of the argument of alpha and through a magnitude equal to mod of alpha because the magnitude of P Q is equal to alpha. So, uh, we can say that the transformation W equal to Z plus alpha is regarded as uh, a translation in the direction given by argument of alpha through a distance equal to mod of alpha. And when we look at the transformation w equal to beta z, uh, the suppose we have this uh, point p here uh, and then we have the complex number a uh, beta, beta is represented by the point a, p represents the complex number z, then p dash. Okay. P dash uh, is uh, represents W, W equal to beta z, where uh, the angle P dash O P, okay. the angle uh, P O P dash is equal to angle uh, A O B, angle o A O B, which is the argument of beta. Moreover that you can see from w equal to beta z that is uh, op dash is equal to uh, mod of oa into op. So, oa into op that is uh, uh, the to get to the point p dash we have to turn the, uh, the vector op anti clockwise through an argument of beta and magnify or contract uh, the vector op. Uh, by uh, 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 the uh, magnitude of uh, beta to get to the point p dash. So, we can say that uh, w equal to beta z is the resultant of a rotation, we have to rotate the vector o p through argument of beta and then magnify okay, uh, this vector o p by uh, mod of beta times to get the vector o p dash. So, it is a resultant of rotation and magnification. Now, in case mod of beta is equal to 1, then we can see uh, mod of w is equal to mod of beta into mod of z. Okay. So, if mod of beta equal to 1, this will be equal to mod of z. 
then there will be no uh, magnification okay the length of op and the r you can say the the uh, the uh, magnitude magnitude of op will be same as the magnitude of op dash so there will be only rotation and if beta is real and positive then argument of beta is equal to 0 if beta is greater than 0 then argument of beta is equal to 0 so there will be no rotation there will be only magnification the vector op uh, will simply be uh, will only be magnified there will be no rotation in this case now let us consider the reciprocal function w equal to 1 by z okay it is the result of inversions in the real axis and the unit circle so let us take w equal to uh, 1 by z where w is rei phi and z equal to rei theta then uh, what will happen uh, w equal to 1 by z will give us r e i phi equal to 1 over uh, z so 1 over r e to the power i theta and which is equal to 1 by r e to the power minus i theta so r will be equal to equating absolute values r equal to 1 by r and equating arguments we get phi equal to minus theta so r is 1 by r and phi is equal to minus theta now let us show that how uh, w equal to 1 by z gives us an inversion with respect to the unit circle combined with the reflection in the real axis. So, uh, let us uh, look at this figure, let us consider this unit circle, suppose we have p point here, this is p, okay. o p is equal to r and argument of this p represents the complex number z. So, this is mod of z and argument of z equal to theta. Okay. So, this angle is theta. Let us drop the uh, tangents on from this point p on the circle. Okay. Say the point of contacts are q and r. Okay. So, join q to r okay. like this and then join q to the origin in R2 origin. Then this is mod of z equal to 1, uh, this is mod of z equal to 1, so O q is equal to O r is equal to 1. Let me call this point of intersection as A. Okay? We will show that P, A, P and A are inverse points with respect to the unit circle. Okay, so, we will show that O A into O P is equal to radius of the circle square that is 1 square equal to 1. Okay. So, let us see how we define the inverse points with respect to a circle, two points P and Q are called inverse points with respect to a circle. two points p and q are called inverse points with respect to a circle uh, with center say c and radius and radius r if uh, cp into cq equal to r square. So, let us say we have this circle uh, of radius r, this is center, radius of the circle is r, p suppose p is here, q is here, okay. then c p uh, into c q, okay. c p into c q should be equal to r square. So, here we are showing, going to show that a and p are inverse points with respect to the unit circle, therefore, we have to show that o p into o a equal to 1. Okay. Now, uh, from the uh, construction it is clear that p q equal to p r length of the two tangents are same okay. and moreover o q is equal to o r equal to 1 because the radius of the circle uh, o q and o r are the radius of the circle which is 1. Now, uh, now we also notice that uh, this angle uh, uh, the, uh, the angle o q p 
इज इक्वल टू एंगल ओ आर क्यू इज इक्वल टू पाई वाई टू एंगल ओ क्यू पी इज इक्वल टू एंगल ओ आर पी इक्वल टू पाई वाई टू बिकॉज पी क्यू इज टेंजेंट एंड ओ क्यू इज रेडियस सिमिलरली पी आर इज टेंजेंट एंड ओ आर इज रेडियस ओके नाउ बाई एस एस क्राइटेरियन बाई एस एस क्राइटेरियन ओके पी क्यू इज इक्वल टू पी आर ओ क्यू इज इक्वल टू ओ आर दी एंगल बिटवीन ओ क्यू एंड क्यू आर क्यू पी दैट इज इज पाई बाई टू एंड एंगल बिटवीन ओ आर एंड पी आर इज ऑल्सो पाई बाई टू सो एंगल ओ क्यू पी इज इक्वल टू एंगल ओ आर पी सो बाई एस एस क्राइटेरियन ट्राइंगल्स ओ क्यू पी ओ ओ क्यू पी एंड ओ आर पी आर कांग्रेंट and therefore uh, this angle okay opq is same as the angle uh, opr okay hence angle opq is same as angle opr furthermore uh, the angle oaq is equal to angle oar एंगल ओ ए क्यू एंगल ओ ए आर इक्वल टू पाई वाई टू ओके नाउ लेट्स कंसिडर दी ट्राइंगल ओ क्यू पी ओके सो इन ओके लेट्स कंसिडर दिस लेट से दिस एंगल इज सपोज आई टेक इट एज से अल्फा ओके लेट से एंगल ओ क्यू ए इक्वल टू अल्फा ओके देन बिकॉज ओ क्यू पी इज पाई बाई टू सो ए क्यू पी इज पाई बाई टू माइनस अल्फा एंड दिस एंगल इज पाई बाई टू सो दिस एंगल इज ऑल्सो अल्फा ओके सो देन एंगल ओ पी क्यू इज इक्वल टू अल्फा now let us consider the triangle oqp from the triangle oqp we have oq upon op is equal to sin alpha and therefore op equal to oq cos alpha but oq is equal to 1 so this is cosec alpha okay now let's consider the triangle oqa from triangle oqa what do we notice uh, oa uh, upon oq oa upon oq okay is equal to साइन अल्फा सो दिस गिव्स यू ओ ए इक्वल टू साइन अल्फा ओके नाउ ओ ए इंटू ओ पी वी कैन सी इज इक्वल टू साइन अल्फा इंटू कॉसिक अल्फा एंड देयर फोर इट इज इक्वल टू वन सो O A into O P is equal to one, and therefore A and P are inverse points with respect to the unit circle. With respect to mod Z equal to one. okay now what we do uh, let us consider the reflection of this point a okay uh, in the real axis so uh, this is your point p star p star okay and uh, this p star is obtained by reflecting the point a in the real axis so op star is same as oa 
the magnet the length of op star is same as the length of uh, oa and op star makes theta angle with the real axis so then i uh, reflect then we consider the reflection of uh, a point a in the real axis real axis okay uh, and we get p star okay so uh, uh, op star uh, is equal to op star equal to oa equal to this is uh, uh, 1 over r okay and argument of p star is equal to minus theta okay because so this means that uh, we what we found was we had w equal to 1 by z so we found that uh, if w is rei phi and z is rei theta then 1 upon rei theta we have this is equal to 1 upon r e to the power minus i theta so r is equal to 1 by r and phi equal to minus theta so we see that op star equal to 1 by r and argument of p star is equal to minus theta and therefore the point a under the the point p under the transformation w equal to 1 by z uh, gives us p star uh, which p star is obtained by uh, considering the inversion of p with respect to the unit circle we get the point a and then we uh, consider the reflection of the point a in the real axis and we get p star so uh, w equal to 1 by z uh, is regarded as an inversion with respect to the unit circle combined with the reflection in the real axis now uh, we have seen that non constant linear mapping okay we considered the non constant linear mapping w equal to az plus b b it consists of two transformations so you can regard this fz equal to az plus b as uh, say uh, fz equal to say zeta plus b where zeta equal to zeta equal to az so this gives you uh, the mapping of the type beta z this w equal to beta z type okay so this is of beta z type and this is the mapping of the type w equal to z plus alpha so fz equal to az plus b consists of two transformations okay uh, translation and this is translation and this one is rotation and magnification so uh, a non constant linear mapping x by rotating magnifying and translating points in the complex plane as a result the angle between any two intersecting curves in the uh, arc in the uh, jet plane is equal to the angle between the images of the arcs in the w plane because the uh, linear mapping does not change the shape of the uh, curve okay it only rotates or magnifies and uh, and translates it so uh, the angle between two intersecting arcs will remain preserved under a linear mapping now the complex mappings that have this angle preserving property are called conformal mappings so let us discuss conformal mappings in detail the most important geometrical property of the analytic functions is their conformality suppose that w equal to fz is a complex mapping defined in a domain d then the mapping is called conformal at a point z not in d if it preserves the angles between oriented curves in magnitude as well as in sen in sense uh, that is if c1 and c2 are two smooth oriented curves in d that intersect suppose c1 is this curve okay this is c1 and this is c2 okay uh, the angle between the curve c1 c2 is the angle between their respective tangents uh, so let us say this is the uh, tangent to the curve c1 this one is the tangent tangent to the curve c2 alpha is the angle between them now uh, the uh, oriented uh, uh, curves means uh, the uh, uh, when we write the equation of the curve in the parametric form uh, sup suppose uh, it is z equal to z t equal to x t plus i y t then the curve is said to have a positive sense in the direction in which t increases okay so and the uh, sense along which uh, uh, the curve has a positive sense the tangent in that same direction will also start to have a positive sense okay so uh, it, so the these are the tangents oriented tangents 
to the curve C1 and C2 and similarly this C1 and C2 under a transformation under the transformation W equal to Fz they are mapped into say this curve C1 star and C2 star. This oriented tangents to the curve C1 star and C2 star at their point of intersection if this point is Z0 okay, in the uh, Z plane then this point is uh, Fz0 under uh, the transformation W equal to Fz. So, this is Fz0 at the point of intersection Fz0 the two uh, tangents oriented tangents uh, to the curves C1 star which is the image of C1 and C2 star which is the image of C2 okay, make the same angle uh, alpha and in the same direction the direction from uh, C1 to C2 we are going if we are going from C1 to C2 here here also uh, 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 from C1 to uh, star to C2 star when we go we should be moving in the same direction. So, then if the angle is preserved in magnitude as well as in sense we say that the mapping is conformal. So, the images C1 star C2 star taken with their corresponding orientation should make the same angle and the angle of intersection uh, is the angle between their respective tangents that angle is if it is alpha the alpha lies between 0 and pi. So, the tangent to a smooth curve C at a point Z0 equal to Zt0 is defined as the limiting position of the straight line through Z0 and another point Z1, Z1 equal to Zt0 plus delta T as we can see in this figure. Okay. This is any curve C in the complex plane, Z0 is equal to uh, the curve C is defined by Zt equal to Xt plus Iyt. t varies from some a to b when we take t equal to t naught it gives us a point on the curve okay let that be z naught so z naught equal to z t naught now let us take another point on the curve okay for the value t naught plus delta t so z t naught plus delta t is let us say z1 okay then we can see that uh, z1 minus z0 divided by delta t okay this is your uh, z1 minus uh, this is z1 this is z0 okay so uh, the number z1 minus z0 can be represented by the vector from z0 to z1 okay this vector can be uh, can represent the com complex number z0 uh, z1 z1 minus z0 okay and z1 minus z0 divided by delta t will have the same direction as the vector z1 minus z0. So, as delta t goes to 0 that is as the point z1 moves along the curve to the point z0 okay, as z0, z1 moves uh, along the curve to the point z0 then z dot t0 okay, z dot t0 is dz over dt at t equal to t0 which is limit of uh, z1 minus z0 over delta t as delta t goes to 0 and this is limit delta t goes to 0 z t0 plus delta t minus z t0 over delta t. So, uh, z, z dot t0 now this uh, uh, so this limit of uh, this expression z t0 plus delta t minus z t0 over delta t this same as along the tangent this limit this limit gives us the uh, direction of the tangent uh, to the curve at the point uh, t0 that is at the point uh, z0. So, uh, z, z dot t0 is tangent to the curve c at the point t0 when this uh, point z1 will move along the curve. Uh, as, as delta t goes to 0 z1 will move along the curve to the point z0 and this uh, uh, vector uh, joining z0 to z1 will move to the tangent to the curve at the will approach to the tangent to the curve at the point z0. So, this is uh, this z dot t0 gives us the uh, direction of the tangent to the curve at t0 and the angle between this vector and the positive x axis okay? angle between this vector this vector and the positive x axis okay this this angle okay this is the argument of z dot t naught now consider the smooth curves c1 and c2 let us consider two curves c1 and c2 uh, they are which are shown in this figure the curves c1 and c2 and their respective c1 dash and c2 dash okay c1 dash is the image of this c1 and c2 dash is the image of c2 under the transformation w equal to z conjugate Okay. Uh, the z1 uh, the curve c1 is given by uh, in the parametric form by z1 t equal to t plus 2 t minus t square into i and the curve c2 in the parametric form is given by z2 equal to t plus 1 by 2 
t square plus 1 into i 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2. Let us find the point of intersection of z1 t and z2 t. Okay. So, at the point of intersection z1 t and z2 t will be same. So, t plus 2 t minus t square equal to uh, t plus half uh, t square plus 1. Okay. So, this cancels with this and what we get 4 t minus 2 t square equal to t square plus 1. So, what we get 3 t square equal to 3. Okay. So, this means t square equal to no 3 t square uh, 3 t square minus 4 t uh, plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. And when we factorize this uh, what we get uh, we can see that uh, t equal to 1 satisfies this equation 3 minus 4 plus 1. So, this is t minus 1 into t minus 1 we can multiply by 3 t. So, 3 t square minus 3 t minus 1. So, we get uh, uh, minus t plus 1. Okay. So, t minus 1 and 3 t minus 1 okay, equal to 0. So, t equal to 1 and 1 by 3. Now, 0 is less than or equal to t less than or equal to uh, 2. So, this is z naught this z naught corresponds to t equal to 1 and this point of intersection corresponds to t equal to 1 by 3. We are considering the point of intersection at t equal to 1. So, when t is equal to 1 what is z 1 t? z 1 t will be 1 plus i and similarly will be uh, z 2 t at t equal to 1 and this is z naught z naught is the point of intersection of z 1 t and z 2 t at t equal to 1. Okay. Now, uh, the, uh, at uh, what is the, uh, so this is uh, at the point z 1 uh, we have this curve, at the point z naught this is the curve c 1, this is the curve c 1. So, argument of uh, z 1, argument of 1 plus i, argument of 1 plus i we know it is pi by 4. Okay, let us find uh, z dot uh, z 1 dot t. Okay. So, z 1 dot t is equal to 1 plus 2 minus 2 t i. Okay. So, z 1 dot uh, at t equal to uh, t naught that is z, so this implies that z 1 dot uh, t naught t naught is equal to 1 is equal to uh, 1 okay. and when we find z 2 dot what we get z 2 dot equal to uh, 1 plus 2 t by 2 okay. so 1 plus t into i okay, which implies that z 2 dot is equal to 1 plus i. Okay. So, the angle uh, which the uh, tangent to the vector at c 1 okay, z 1 dot okay, or z 1 dash, okay. it makes with the uh, x axis is 0. Okay. This means that argument of uh, z 1 dot is equal to 0 and argument of z 2 dot is equal to pi by 4. Okay. So, argument of z 1 dot gives the angle which the tangent to the curve at c 1 makes with the x axis. So, angle that the curve tangent to the curve uh, c 1 makes with the x axis is 0 while the tangent uh, to the curve c 2 at the point z naught makes angle pi by 4. So, this angle pi by 4 is the angle between the tangents uh, to the curve c 1 and c 2 at the point z naught. Now, let us come to the uh, image curves c 1 dash and c 2 dash. C 1 dash uh, becomes uh, this one uh, under the mapping w equal to z conjugate c curve is given by c 1 curve is given by z 1 t equal to t plus 2 t minus t square into i. So, image curve will be given w 1 will be given by w 1 t equal to t minus 2 my t minus t square into i and the image curve c 2 dash will be given by w 2 t equal to t minus 1 by 2 t square plus 1 into i. Okay, so, uh, now let us see uh, w 1 dot 
okay at the point where where do, do they intersect w1 t and w2 t w1 t and w2 t intersect at the point fz0 okay so fz0 w equal to fz uh, fz w equal to fz equal to z conjugate so this f this gives you fz0 equal to z0 var okay and fz0 is equal to z0 is equal to 1 plus i okay z0 is equal to 1 plus i so this is 1 plus i var okay so 1 minus i okay so they intersect this is your uh, w0 equal to 1 minus i point okay and if you find w1 dot w1 dot is equal to w1 dot equal to 1 minus uh, 2t minus t square means 2 minus 2t into i okay into complex number i and uh, w2 dot will be what w2 dot will be 1 minus uh, 1 by 2 into 2 t equal to so 1 minus t into i okay and t is equal to 1 okay t is equal to 1 so uh, you can see t is equal to 1 so this means that w1 dot is equal to uh, 1 t equal to 1 means t equal to 1 means this is 0 so w1 dot equal to 1 w2 dot equal to 1 minus i okay so w1 dot means the curve uh, c1 dash okay you can see this curve c1 dash okay it makes angle 0 with the uh, uh, u axis okay with the real axis w1 dot is parallel to the uh, u axis so it makes angle 0 and w2 dot equal to 1 minus i okay it makes angle this one pi by 4 but its argument will be uh, minus pi by 4 when you associate the direction okay so minus pi by 4 so here you can see that uh, the angle uh, remains preserved angle between c1 and c2 at the point of intersection z0 is pi by 4 at the point w0 also the angle between c1 dash and c2 dash is pi by 4 but here uh, the sense of the angle from c1 to c2 is in the anti clockwise direction while here the angle uh, uh, from c1 dash to c2 dash is in the clockwise direction okay in this direction so the angle is preserved in the magnitude but not in sense and therefore the mapping w equal to z conjugate is not conformal at the point of intersection z0 that is at the point z w equal to 1 plus i so uh, in fact it, the mapping w equal to z conjugate is uh, not conformal at any point of the complex plane here we have taken uh, two particular uh, curves and showed that it is not conformal at their point of intersection but it is con not conformal at any point of the uh, z plane now uh, let us consider uh, the theorem which says that the mapping defined by an analytic function is conformal at all points except at those points where the derivative is zero so uh, this is a very uh, uh, important theorem because from this theorem we can easily test uh, the points where the given mapping uh, uh, is a uh, conformal mapping by, by finding its derivative. Uh, but uh, so the points where the derivative vanishes are called the critical points of the uh, mapping. Uh, the, the points where the derivative does not exist uh, of a complex function those points are also called the critical points. So, critical points actually consist of those points where the derivative either the derivative of the function w equal to fz does not exist or it is 0. So, here uh, let us consider uh, the analytic function and the analytic function is differentiable uh, infinitely. So, we can uh, say that it is conformal uh, uh, at all points except at the critical points that is the points where its derivative is 0. So, let us say let us prove this let w equal to fz be equal to uxy plus ibxy be a non constant analytic function defined in a domain containing a smooth oriented curve c then the image of c under this mapping is a curve c dash in the w plane represented by wt equal to fzt. The point z0 equal to zt0 corresponds to the point wt0 of c dash and w dash t0 as we have already discussed represents the tangent uh, to the curve c dash at the point t equal to t0. Now by the chain rule dw over dt equal to dw over dz into dz by dt. Okay. So 
if f prime z naught is not equal to 0 then from here you can see w dot t naught is not equal to 0 ok and therefore uh, c dash has a unique tangent at the point w t naught. Now the angle between the tangent vector w dot t naught and the positive u axis is given by argument of w dot t naught. Uh, from this equation, from this equation we find that uh, from this equation we find that argument of w this uh, w dot t naught equal to argument of w dot t naught. This is uh, see w, w, this is w dash uh, w dot t okay w dot t equal to uh, f prime z into z dot t ok. So, we know that argument of z1 into z2 is argument of z1 plus argument of z2. So, argument of w dot t is equal to argument of f prime z plus argument of z dot t. So, from here it follows that argument of z w dot t naught equal to argument of f z dash z naught plus argument of z dot t naught. Now, under the mapping the tangent to C uh, at the point z naught is rotated through the angle ok, we, uh, we can see uh, the, it is rotated through the angle argument of w dot t naught minus argument of z dot t naught ok. So, suppose you have this curve let us say in the z plane let us say this curve we have curve C ok. Uh, so, this curve will be rotated uh, by argument of f prime z naught ok in the uh, w plane ok. So, this uh, so they are the tangent to the curve suppose you take this tangent to the curve at the point z naught ok. Uh, then this is your w naught suppose the tangent to the curve at the point w naught will be uh, rotated by uh, angle given by argument of f dot t naught argument of f dot uh, w dot t naught minus argument of z, d, z dot t naught this gives the angle by which the tangent to the curve c at the point z naught is rotated ok. So, that is given by argument of f prime z naught the angle between those two tangent vectors to c and c dash ok. So, since the expression on the right now this expression is independent of the choice of C this angle is independent of C the transformation W equal to FZ therefore rotates the tangents of all curves through Z naught through the same angle argument of F prime Z naught. Hence two curves through Z naught if you take two curves through Z naught let us say we have two curves through Z naught C 1 and C 2 ok. this c 1 this c 2 ok. So, this is the tangent to the curve c 1 and this is the tangent to the curve c 2 ok. If it uh, if this angle is say uh, alpha ok then both these curves ok are rotated by the same angle ok given by argument of f prime z naught. So, this is c 1 dash and this is c 2 dash for example ok then this is the tangent to the curve c 1 dash this is the tangent to the curve c 2 dash the angle between the two curves will remain alpha because c 1 is uh, rotated by uh, argument of f prime z naught and c 2 is also rotated by angle r argument of f prime z naught. So, the angle between c 1 and c 2 does not change ok. So, hence two curves through z naught which form a certain angle at z naught are mapped upon curves forming the same angle in sense as well as in magnitude at the image point w naught of z naught. Now, let us consider the mapping w equal to z square. So, we can see that d w by d z or you can say f prime z if I take it f z then this is equal to 2 z ok. So, f prime z is equal to 0 uh, uh, at z equal to 0. This means that w equal to z square is not conformal ok w equal to z square is not conformal at z equal to 0 at any other point 
any point other than the origin, it is a conformal mapping. Now, let us see how, how it is not conformal at z equal to 0. It will be easy to take say O p which makes angle pi by 4 okay, and this by axis okay, O q which makes angle pi by 2. Okay. So, uh, let us take these two uh, uh, arcs, uh, these two rays, let us take these two rays, then O p uh, w equal to z square. So, r e phi r e i phi equal to r square e to the power 2 i theta. If, we, if, if z equal to r e i theta and uh, w equal to r e i phi. So, r will be equal to capital R will be small r square and phi will be 2 theta. Okay. Now, this, this is theta equal to pi by 4. Okay. So, theta equal to pi by 4 will become uh, uh, pi by 2. Okay. So, this is z plane. Okay. So, O p will be mapped on to O p dash here. Okay. O p will go to O p dash and O q this makes angle pi by uh, 4, uh, this makes angle pi by 2. Okay. So, this will be mapped on to negative uh, uh, u axis, okay. this is O q dash okay. and we can see that angle between O p and O q, angle between O p and O q is uh, pi by 4. Okay. Here the angle between O p dash and O q dash becomes pi by 2. Okay because phi is equal to 2 theta. So, O p makes angle pi by 4 will go to O p dash which makes angle pi by 2 and O q makes angle uh, pi by 2 with the x axis. So, it will O q is image O q dash will make an angle pi with the uh, u axis okay. and therefore, the angle between O p dash and O q dash is pi by 2. So, angles are doubled at the origin and therefore, the angle between two uh, curves okay here they are uh, rays okay o p and o q the angle between two rays is not preserved at the origin and so w equal to z square is not conformal at the origin now if you consider the other example fz equal to e to the power z we know that it is an entire function because it is differentiable for all finite complex numbers z so and if you find f prime z f prime z is equal to e to the power z and we know that e to power z is not equal to 0 for any complex number z. And therefore, f z equal to e to the power z is conformal for all z, for all z belonging to C. Now, uh, let us consider critical points as I had already said if a complex function w equal to f z is analytic at a point z naught and if its derivative at z naught vanishes then z naught is called a critical point of f. Now, it does not follow from theorem 1 that analytic functions which are not conformal uh, I mean it does not follow that uh, if f prime z naught is not uh, is equal to 0 then uh, the uh, analytic function cannot be uh, c from this theorem it follows that if we look at this theorem okay it says that the mapping is conformal at every point z where f prime z is not equal to 0 now if f prime z is equal to 0 then why the mapping is not conformal it why it, can, why it cannot be conformal see it does not follow from theorem 1 that analytic functions are not conformal at critical points the points where f prime z is, is equal to 0. It only says that wherever derivative is not 0, the mapping is conformal, but why it, why it is not conformal at uh, the points where f prime z equal to 0, it follows from the second theorem. This theorem tells us that the magnification of angles occurs at a critical point. Okay. So, angles are not preserved actually at a critical point and therefore, wherever the function analytic function has derivative 0, it cannot be conformal at those points. So, let f be analytic at the critical point z naught. Suppose uh, n greater than 1 is an integer such that f prime z naught, f double prime z naught and minus 1th derivative of f z at z naught is 0, but the nth derivative is 
non-zero, then the angle between any two smooth curves intersecting at Z naught is increased by a factor of n by the complex mapping. So, if you have angle between any two intersecting curves at the point Z naught alpha, then it at, at the point W naught in the W plane, the angle between the corresponding images will be n times alpha. So, the angle is not preserved and therefore, we say that we can say that uh, the, at the critical point the analytic function f z does not have uh, is not conformal. So, let us prove this uh, result uh, by our hypothesis we have assumed that f z is analytic at the point z naught. So, we can uh, uh, by our hypothesis we can write its Taylor series expansion f z equal to f z naught plus f prime z naught into z minus z naught and so on. And then, because f z uh, f prime z naught f double prime z naught f n minus one th derivative at z naught is 0, but the nth derivative is non zero, the power series reduces to this ok f z equal to f z naught plus z minus z naught to the power n into f n z naught over n factorial z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 f n plus 1 z naught over n plus 1 factorial and so on. And this I can write in this form z minus z naught to the power n we can uh, take as a common factor and then the remaining expression inside the bracket can uh, will represent a analytic function g z and uh, this g z analytic function at z naught is not equal to 0 because g z naught is equal to f n z naught over n factorial. f n z naught is not equal to 0. So, g z naught is not equal to 0 and therefore, argument of w minus w naught w is equal to f z w naught is f z naught. So, argument of f z minus f z naught is equal to n times argument of z minus z naught ok plus argument of uh, g z argument of uh, z to we know that uh, if z is equal to r i theta. Uh, so, theta is the argument of z then z to the power n is r to the power n e to the power i n theta. So, argument of z to the power n becomes n times argument of uh, z. So, here argument of z minus z naught to the power n is n times argument of z minus z naught plus argument of g z. Okay, now, let alpha be the angle which the tangent vector to a smooth curve gamma at z naught makes with the positive x axis. Let us take this. Okay, suppose, we have this curve, okay, a smooth curve. Okay and uh, suppose this is your point z naught the point the curve the tangent at the point z naught ok makes an angle uh, this is your curve a smooth curve we have denoted by gamma. So, this uh, a smooth curve by gamma and here this angle uh, is alpha ok the angle which the tangent to the curve at the point z naught makes with the positive x axis beta be the angle which the tangent to the image curve gamma ok. Let us take this w plane. So, in the w plane suppose this is the smooth uh, this is the curve ok uh, capital gamma and this is your point w naught equal to f z naught ok. So, tangent to this curve at this point makes this angle this angle is beta let us say ok beta be the angle which is the tangent to the image curve gamma at w equal to f z ok under w equal to f z at w naught makes with the positive u axis. Then if z tends to z naught along gamma if z tends to z naught let us say z be any point here if z tends to z naught along gamma then w tends to w naught ok this is w ok tends to w naught uh, equal to f z naught along gamma. So, that the last equation gives now from the last equation what do we notice as z tends to z naught ok as z tends to z naught this uh, this the question will give you uh, this one ok beta equal to argument of uh, n alpha plus argument of uh, a n ok. This is uh, f z minus argument of f z minus f z naught f z f z f z minus f z naught is this vector ok uh, this this vector ok this uh, you can join w minus w naught and this is uh, z minus z naught. So, as z tends to z naught you will get the direction of the tangent here and when uh, z tends to z naught w will tend to w naught. So, it will give you the direction of the tangent here. So, uh, this when w z tends to z naught argument of w minus w naught tends to beta and argument of z minus z naught tends to alpha ok and uh, uh, this uh, becomes argument of g z naught. So, 
what we have beta will be equal to n alpha plus argument of uh, uh, g z naught g z naught is a n a n is f n z naught over n factorial. Now, let gamma gamma 1 and gamma 2 be 2 smooth curves passing through z naught take 2 curves suppose this is one curve and this is another curve ok this is gamma 1 this is gamma 2 ok in the z plane and uh, let gamma 1 gamma 2 be 2 smooth curve passing through z naught ok and let gamma 1 capital gamma 1 capital gamma 2 be the corresponding images this is gamma 1 and this is gamma 2 ok this is uh, z naught so this is f z naught or w naught ok gamma 1 gamma 2 with the respective images under w equal to f z suppose that the tangents to the curves gamma k and capital gamma k make an angle alpha k and beta k with the real axis of the z plane. So, let us say gamma 1 makes angle alpha 1 ok uh, uh, gamma 2 makes angle at the point of intersection alpha 2 ok here gamma 1 capital gamma 1 makes angle beta 1 this capital gamma 2 makes angle beta 2 ok then uh, uh, so, uh, gamma k and gamma k make angle alpha k and beta k with the real axis of the z plane and w plane respectively for k equal to 1 and 2 ok. Then uh, beta 1 will be equal to n alpha 1 plus argument of a n beta 2 will be n alpha 2 plus argument of a n and this will imply that alpha equal to if you take alpha equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2. So, uh, alpha is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2 and beta equal to beta 1 minus beta 2 ok. So, then what happens uh, if we take alpha equal to the alpha 1 minus alpha 2 beta equal to beta 1 minus beta 2 respectively uh, then the angle between gamma 1 gamma 1 gamma 2 ok and their images capital gamma 1 and capital gamma 2 ok will, uh, will be like this. So, beta 1 minus beta 2 will be beta equal to n times alpha 1 minus alpha 2 that is alpha. So, we will have uh, argument of n will cancel. So, beta equal to n alpha ok. So, the you can see the angle between the two curves this angle ok beta this angle is alpha and this angle is beta ok beta becomes n alpha. So, from this theorem it follows that. So, the angle at the point of intersection is not preserved uh, at a critical point. So, from this theorem it follows that no analytic function can be conformal at its critical points. The angle gets magnified it, it becomes uh, n times the angle between the curves in the z plane. Now, let us consider the mapping w equal to sin z ok. So, uh, we see that it is an entire function. and if you find its derivative then d w over d z equal to cos z ok and cos z equal to 0 gives z equal to 2 n plus 1 into pi by 2 where n is equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on ok. And uh, if you f this so this is f prime z. So, f prime z is 0 at z equal to 2 n plus 1 into pi by 2 where n is equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So, this means that f z is not conformal at z equal to 2 n plus 1 into pi by 2 n equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on at all other points it is conformal ok. Now, if you find second derivative f double prime z f double prime z is minus sin z ok so, minus sin z. So, uh, 
f prime z double f double prime z is not equal to 0 at z equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 ok n equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on actually uh, f double prime is equal to plus minus 1 uh, at z equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. So, the theorem uh, 2 tells us that at these critical points, these are critical points z equal to uh, because the derivative of f z vanishes at z equal to 2 n plus 1 into pi by 2. So, z equal to 2 n plus 1 into pi by 2 are the critical points of sin z. And uh, since uh, since f double prime z is not equal to 0, the theorem 2 tells us that uh, at the at the critical points z equal to 2 n plus 1 into pi by 2, the angle between any two intersecting curve uh, in the uh, z plane, uh, if it is alpha, it will be doubled uh, in the w plane, because uh, we have in from the theorem 2 tells us that the angle uh, between any two intersecting curves at the point critical point in the z plane is multiplied by uh, n, okay, uh, where n is the uh, number uh, which is greater than uh, n is the positive integer greater than 1 such that f prime z not equal to 0, f double prime z not equal to 0, n minus 1 of derivative of f z equal to z not is 0, but n of derivative is non 0. And here we notice that f double prime uh, z not is not equal to 0. So, n is equal to 2 here, okay. So, here n is equal to so, let us uh, uh, let us now show that uh, uh, the angle uh, uh, at, at a critical points uh, between two intersecting curves uh, doubles here. Now, uh, let us uh, show that uh, let us take the critical point z equal to pi by 2. We see that z critical points are z given by z equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2, where n can take value 0 plus minus 1 and so on, plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So, let us take n equal to 0. So, let us consider the critical point z equal to pi by 2, okay. Let us consider the z plane. Uh, here, this is uh, so let us consider the point pi by 2 here, okay. Let us consider the ray, this ray. Okay. Any point z on this ray will have equation z equal to pi by 2 plus i y. Okay. So, let us consider the ray c 1 emanating from z equal to pi by 2 and then let us see under the uh, mapping w equal to sin z what happens to the image of c 1. Okay. So, w equal to sin z gives sin of pi by 2 plus i y. Okay. So, this is uh, sin pi y 2 uh, into uh, cos i y plus cos pi y 2 into sin i y. Sin pi y 2 is 1, cos pi y 2 is 0. So, we have cos i y and cos i y equal to cos hyperbolic by. Okay. So, w is equal to u plus i b is equal to cos hyperbolic by. So, this means that u is cos hyperbolic by and b is equal to 0. Okay. So, this means that the, uh, map, uh, the uh, ray c 1 is mapped onto the real axis. This uh, uh, point pi y 2 uh, goes to uh, when you are z equal to pi y 2. Okay. This goes to w equal to 1. Okay. So, this is w equal to 1 here and then here you have w equal to 2 and so on. Okay. So, this uh, cos hyperbolic by okay, uh, this is this uh, and this is uh, w equal to uh, cos hyperbolic by gives you u equal to cos hyperbolic by b equal to 0. So, this is mapped into this ray c 1 uh, dash. Okay. This ray 
pi by uh, given by uh, uh, this uh, w equal to pi by 2 plus i by where by is greater than or equal to 0 okay is mapped to the ray emanating from w equal to 1 along the uh, u axis okay because b is equal to 0 okay only u is there u is cos hyperbolic by okay and by is greater than or equal to 0. So, it this so when by is equal to 0 we get here pi by 2 that pi by 2 maps into cos this uh, by, by, by equal to 0 means this pi by 2 point pi by 2 here it goes to 1. So, this w equal to 1 is the image of z equal to pi by 2 ok. Now, let us take another uh, uh, ray c 2 dash c 2 ok. So, c 2 now will have equation it is emanating from pi by 2 and going uh, in the y direction uh, just opposite of c 1 ok. So, this is z equal to pi by 2 minus i y ok or you can say pi by 2 plus i y y less than or equal to 0 ok. So, z equal to pi by 2 plus i y where y is less than or equal to 0 here you so this c 2 will map into c 2 dash and w equal to sin z will again give the same uh, value sin uh, pi by 2 plus i y where by is less than or equal to 0 this is cos hyperbolic by where by is less than or equal to 0 ok. Uh, but cos hyperbolic by always assumes positive values ok even in uh, it is a it is an even function of by. So, whatever values it takes for by greater than or equal to 0 same values it takes for by less than or equal to 0 and therefore, what happens c 2 is also mapped into the same uh, uh, image c 2 this c 2 dash and c 1 dash are same ok. So, c 1 dash and c 2 dash are same ok. Now, angle between uh, c 1 and c 2 is pi ok. c 1 and c 2 is pi at the critical point pi by 2, but here this pi the critical point z naught is mapped into w equal to 1 and the angle between c 1 dash and c 2 dash is 0 which is same as 2 pi ok. So, angle between c 1 dash and c 2 dash is 2 pi. So, the angle between c 1 and c 2 which is pi is doubled here. Uh, it, it becomes uh, 2 pi ok. So, angle between c 1 and c 2 is equal to pi uh, and angle uh, between c 1 dash and c 2 dash is 0 are equivalently 2 pi. Thus, the angle between C 1 C 2 at the critical point pi by 2 is doubled under W equal to sin z. So, this verifies the theorem 2. Uh, with that I would like to end this lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.